Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Mostly Peaceful Latinas. I'm your host, Bella. And I'm Linda. And before we get started, don't forget to hit share, like, and subscribe. Help us get on the algorithm, guys. I'm sure you have questions about what's going on. We have answers coming up shortly, but please like this video before we get started. Please don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Remember that Mostly Peaceful Latinas is a self-funded podcast, no Illuminati, no lizard people. So we strongly depend on your help in order to keep this going. Mm. Hey, this is, uh, Hey, Hey, Hey everyone. Welcome to the mostly peaceful, uh, very modest show showing no shoulders, showing no face, no titties, no ass. There are no thoughts allowed. We wouldn't want to cause any impure want to cause thoughts on conservative minds. Thoughts. We don't want we don't want the men to lust after us. We want to make sure that we still that we are holy and pure for the conservatives who can't even see a titty because they start crying. So this is what we are now. We are now Muslim women. We have our veils. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, welcome. You guys know that this is what conservatives want from this us. This is what conservatives want from us. So this is what they get. Uh, pretty soon we will be sold off for 10 sheep. I'm going to be sold off to an Arab, uh, hopefully a very rich man, hopefully rich enough where I won't mind uh, having to wear this veil everywhere, probably even to the beach. No, um, de de definitely to the beach. Definitely especially, to the beach. Especially, especially to the beach. I'm going to be rollerblading around like this pretty soon because apparently conservatives can't even see leggings. They can't see anything. They can't see leggings, no bikinis. I had some guy on True Social lose it with a repost of your uh, Shaney Rich post. And he's like, oh, hussies everywhere. It's like, we're in a beach, dude. We're in a beach. Guys, before we get started, take a minute to check out our sponsor, Century H2O. Our friends over at Century that love us and believe in us so much. For those of you, remember the Ohio disaster that happened with the train derailment. Our friends at Century H2O are still producing water filters and ensuring that every resident in Pal East Palestine, Ohio, that wants an under-the-sink unit does get one. Uh, Linda and I are both not oh, old. Linda's learning how to drink with this thing on. I'm learning how to breathe. This is com this is commitment. This is commitment. This is commitment. No wonder the Arab women can actually get Chanel's all the time because this is this is a problem. I can't even drink my wine under this. But guys, don't forget to support Century H2O if you need a water filtration system for less than three hundred dollars. Um, you can get. A water for trusted system under the sink, 10 steps, very quick. You also save a lot of money because you're not buying, buying water bottles. And they you um you get to not turn gay and it which will... is apparently a pandemic, which is why we're dressed like this, because we don't know what the hell is going on. But apparently conservative men want us to wear basketball shorts and and basically and be their homies. Be, yeah, and basically just be uh modest. So this is what we're doing now. Uh, but yeah, please support H, uh, Century H2O. Use code MPL10 for a small discount. And today we have a packed show. We are going to be discussing... Why are we dressed like this? I'm sure you're wondering. I'm sure <laughs> that you are wondering, am I in the right show? Is this the Mostly Peaceful Latinas show? Yes, make no mistake. You are in the right show. See... Uh, over the past several, well, it's actually, it's been going on for several years, but over the past several months, some something has truly happened on the internet. And it's interesting because for a movement that seems to care so much about traditional gender roles, men sure are assholes on the internet. Let me tell you something. I have never be, been more body shamed and, uh, my, my, my boobs and my body has never been more talked about since... Going back on Twitter, as you guys know, I was banned for Twitter and we're not anymore. And I've been managing our mostly peaceful account and fighting with the Santa supporters who, for some odd reason, uh, just want to call attention to my body, to my videos, to my boobs. They hate double Ds. Uh, it's really weird. 
they're always talking about women's double D's and how they're fake or they're not fake. And um, it's 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 really weird what's going on. It's like a combination of misogyny with politics. And these are the same people that say that Trump cannot get the vote for women in 2024. He can bring over moderates. He can bring over independents. He can bring over suburban women. But they are online trashing women, talking about how fat we are, talking about how um, we look like, uh, what is it, dollar store Kardashians, how we need to go clean toilets, um, many other nasty things on the internet. In fact, today, um, the same person who body shamed me a few weeks ago, Rudder Dave, uh, was being a hypocrite. And saying, oh, Trump supporters are trying to body shame and 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 talk about Kaylee McEnany's looks. And then, of course, I pulled out the receipts and I said, dude, honestly, like you attack me. You call me fat. You say I, I, I catfish people <laughs> on the Internet. Uh, you say I, I, I have to pose with a side chick, a fat chick angle. But here you are trying to, to be a white knight for Kaylee McEnany. But we don't care about those people right now. Um, we have a lot of things to talk about. Apparently, Laura Loomer has been exposing Marjorie Taylor Greene. We have our own thoughts about Marjorie Taylor Greene, and she apparently is still working with Milo. So dun, we're gonna dun, dun. <laughs> So we're gonna get into that. We're also gonna talk about. I can't even see with this shit. I'm gonna have are to this, take this are off. This graciado of the week. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take it off. <laughs> we're soon. gonna take it off. But soon. first, let's talk about the tweet that triggered it all. Why are we dressed like this, right? Well, because conservative men are doing things like this on the internet. Let me show Elijah you. Elijah Schaefer says, "Hold on, pull up the tweet. Pull it's up, up the tweet. it's up. Why is women's workout clothes essentially lingerie? Bathing suits are the lingerie, but even then, you could make more excuses for that. Yoga pants in public." But why is it that women being empowered means that they dress nearly naked in shared spaces? Have an OnlyFans. Thank you. So where does Elijah Schaefer live, first of all? Because he definitely does not live in Miami. Well, the first thing that we have to talk about Elijah Schaefer is that there's a lawsuit against him and the Blaze for allegedly, and we don't know if this is true or not, he used to have a podcast with Sydney Watson. And it abruptly ended. There was a lot of talk behind the scenes about things that he did on the show that were inappropriate. The lawsuit claims that he would talk about women in a certain way, that he was disrespectful. A lot of it honestly seems like she is complaining and maybe not being completely honest. But then there's also somebody else called Sarah Gonzalez that I guess he had... Um, He's done a couple of said or done inappropriate things too. At the same time, for those of you in the chat that he cheated on his wife, I don't want to talk about people's marriages, but there is a rumor that he was, he did cheat on his wife. So Elijah Schaefer, who now lives in Australia, I think this guy is pretty much running away from America for the legal troubles that he, that are pending against him and the blaze. Uh, and probably to get away from sin as well, <laughs> because America's too sinful for him. He's not here anymore. He lives in Australia. He's lost a few pounds, I think. He's gotten in shape. Now he's a good um now he's a good husband. Now he's committed. Now he's uh working out. So he feels the need to body shame people on the internet, talk about leggings. And this is exactly why we are wearing this. What is this? A hijab? A burqa? This is actually a burqa. burqa. This, this is not is a hijab. Burqa. This is a burqa. I got a burqa. Um, let me just say something. Bella and I wear leggings. I think she's wearing leggings. I'm, I'm wearing actually leggings wearing right jeans. We wear leggings 90% of the time and we both work from home and we do it out of comfort. I don't think I have ever put on a pair of leggings to say, this is how I'm going to get a man. Or this is how I want to... Uh, get a man's attention. Definitely when, not. When I want to get a man's attention, I would wear a dress. I would wear heels. I'm going to put perfume. I'm going to look nice. I'm going to look feminine and well put together. I don't think that that is the case of leggings. However, I do understand that women have taken um, the gym culture to the extreme in some cases. There are some women who pretty much are almost naked at the gym uh, but we live in Miami, so we are 
we see a different side of a culture. We see a culture that most of America does not see. Most of the women here go to the grocery store, go drop off their kids, uh, go run errands in gym wear. A lot of women do. Standard. Standard. Standard it's like South standard Florida. style for well, South I mean, Florida. Um, you know, at leisure, as far as like retail sales go in apparel, at leisure, uh, retail sales have actually had a downward trend over the last 10 years or so. And it is at leisure that has actually kind of the only thing that has consistently gone up in retail. So it's incredibly uh, interesting to see comments like, like I mean, we're not talking about booty shorts. We're not talking about push-up bras. I mean, these these are all other uh, other aspects of it. We're talking about a pair of leggings. And apparently, a pair of leggings is too much for conservative men. They need true modest women, which is, once again, for those of you that just came on in the chat, that's why we're dressed like this. We are dressed like this today in the MPL podcast because conservative men have time and time and time again told us how um, immoral we are for doing basic women things like wearing makeup or wearing oh, yeah, makeup leggings. Is a, it, makeup is a problem for them too. Yeah. yeah, makeup is a problem. So we're here to send the statement. I'm actually going to be taking, I think we should take this thing no, off for a little is, while. This is really uncomfortable. I yeah, have no I idea how these women do it. Like, uh, this, is, uh, this is horrible. This is they it, horrible. do it for faith and this it's horrible. Um, like, wow. I could see the hijab being kind of like a vibe, Ooh. maybe, but but the um maybe the, maybe maybe a cotton hijab. Yeah, I don't know if this. Well, this is a burqa. Fight. Yeah. Um, it, I have a lot of problems with the whole trad wife. I have a lot of problems with the manosphere, and I've been kind of ringing the alarm for quite some time. But of course, let's talk about how extreme they are. Let's talk about this next tweet. Okay. That we bring saw. it up. Well, well, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Rolo Tomasi says, the quickest path to becoming a high value man. Uh, one, don't get married. Uh, number two, avoid family creation. Number three, vasectomy in your <laughs> 20s. Eliminate all sedations. Lift consistently. Learn game and networking. Play to your strengths, build, build wealth, and resist easing up on your focus. So now we've gotten to the point of the contradictory psyop that is the manosphere where young men are being told that it not to get married not to reproduce because of course god forbid that evil women um share life with you or share your wealth or 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 any of the sorts it's just so count it's so counterintuitive i've told you about this i've had a problem with it since the very beginning um i feel like Kate, I, I, I don't believe a lot of the things that have happened recently with Andrew Tate, but I also do believe that he's a contradictory character, just like most people in the manosphere, mm -hmm. because they don't actually preach traditional values while at the same time expecting traditional values from Wait, the women. Let, let's go back to a second. For those of you who don't know, uh, Rolo mm -hmm. Tomasi is, uh, or at The Rational Mail on Twitter, he's actually a pretty big voice for the manosphere someone who has constantly been giving, you know, advice on how to be a high value man to men on the internet. He's also known for shaming only fans models, which is pretty funny because I saw an interaction of him trying to shame a girl, uh, an only fans model that was wearing a very, very tiny bikini, like probably like a size XL for somebody that has like double D's. Um, she obviously wants to drive attention to her only fans and get money and whatnot. And she was like, I can always tell when, uh, cause I went to her Twitter to see what she was saying. She's like, I can always tell when Rolo sends his, his, uh, incels to my page because they're all in the comments or they're all shaming me and yada, yada, yada. Um, and let me just say something. And I had this discussion today with two friends. Uh, my friend Victor and my friend Josue were in a chat together and my friend Victor was sharing um, tweets from some girl that we know that she also does OnlyFans and she's a whore and whatnot. And I told him, I said, look, even though this is uncomfortable and you may not understand this, women always win, even whores. So this sometimes um, whores win more. Sometimes whores win more. And 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 it's not to encourage women to be OnlyFans models, it's not to encourage women to be whores. Um, on the contrary, uh, we don't want that, but it is a reality that these men in the manosphere 
particularly those who follow Andrew Tate don't understand. There's a girl named Shannon Michelle. Most of you probably seen her video in one viral where she goes, uh, I, once upon a time, I used to be a feminist. I used to be, uh, I, I used to be a feminist and I used to wear, you know, blue hair and I had the armpit hair, blah, 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 blah. And I knew from the beginning that I saw her, her mannerisms, the way she spoke, how sexual she is. I'm like, I know she was a whore. Like, I just know for sure that she's a whore. And like, of course, now people are doxing her and exposing, um, you know, somebody knows in the chat, her only fans got leaked. And I showed that to my friends. And I said, this girl is about eight months pregnant. She's living now in Costa Rica with her husband, fiance, boyfriend, whatever it is. She's now living a wholesome life. She's preaching this wholesome life on the internet, talking about how she's a reformed hoe because, I mean, she she didn't talk about her OnlyFans in that video that went viral that even Elon Musk talked about it. But she definitely is now pregnant and living her best life in Costa Rica. So you mean to tell me that even a girl who was naked on the internet is able to get a man to wife her down and impregnate her and build a family? I'm telling you that it's possible. I'm telling you that it's true. And I'm telling you that it happens more often than others. There's always going to be a man who will be okay with a girl's lifestyle. I'm not saying this for everybody. I don't think that I'm preaching that people should do it or with men should do it, but it is a reality that the manosphere does not want to face. With me, I feel like that I, I I'm less worried about making the argument for the OnlyFans models because again, I just I feel like that that thing <laughs> the, the the idea that there's this overwhelming amount of young women on yeah. OnlyFans seems like kind of psyopy to me. Mm -hmm. Um, my 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 bigger argument is more so when um it comes to the expectations of women as far as like. You know, what's your body count? Oh my God, the body as, count is ridiculous. Like, how I, do you even ask that question? I mean, number one, chances are that if the girl has an embarrassing body count, you're probably never gonna. You're know gonna lie about like, it. She's gonna lie to you about it. So then, what's the point of asking? Um, my biggest thing with the with the manosphere is that it's contradictory, right? You've got these men. Traditional values put men in a position of leadership and power. Part of what they are are protectors. Who are they meant? Who are men meant to protect? Men are meant to protect women and children. So when you have an entire movement that is influencing young men to hate women, that's contradictory to traditional values. So we are a like this guy. This guy's right. literally saying, "Get a vasectomy in your twenties and avoid family creation." How does that make you a high value man to stop your legacy, to stop yourself from reproducing and creating children? You act like only there's only horse. You act like you can't find a good woman that you'll be able to continue your. What is that? What is it called? Your, your lineage, your, yeah, your, your lineage. lineage. Um, and this is something that has taken over the internet. You have the guys from Fresh and Fit. You have the guys from whatever, which, by the way, the, the guy from whatever got owned this week. He got owned by this young, uh, original feminist. She's not really like a crazy feminist. She's like, you know, pro-women, but she has a boyfriend. She's like anti the feminist movement, like the crazy left. But she's very smart and articulate. And um, she got he got owned. He got owned because he she called him out. She was like, you guys bring on women who Young have women. the old the, the IQ of a goldfish to basically make fun of make fun of them and be able to get these viral clips because you know how the manosphere or what the manosphere likes or doesn't like. I showed you that clip. Right, right, right. Let's um let, I, I want to give a few moments just to go over before we keep on with this topic. Um, let's start off with our boy Shuda coming through with the first donation of the night. Uh, Mr. Miguel Escui saying, always thankful for you girls, especially Linda trolling haters on the right way. God bless. We have Yenny with a real different. <laughs> I love it. Love you guys. Thank you for keeping it real. Oh, are you doing that for me? Is that something that I should know how to do? I love it. Adam coming through, keeping the lights on per usual, saying, hello, ladies, not much to say tonight, except how proud I am to support MPL. Keep pushing it forward. Y'all are God's anointing no matter what you wear. God bless you, Adam. Thank you so much for 
always consistently supporting us. We have Ale Milan. Love it. You guys are hilarious. Thank you for the laugh. Um, we got to laugh because if not, we got to cry, yeah, right? It's like ridiculous. <laughs> Our boy informed of Anthony. No gloves or glasses, my sisters. Too much fingers. Complete haram. <laughs> haram, haram, haram. <laughs> haram. Haram. Um, all right. And who do we have? Miguel Garcia saying, I'm a fan of you guys. Hope your show blows up. Thank you guys so much for your donations. Robert Lee, después del muerto de Cavern Samuels, abandoné el manosphere. Robert <laughs> Lee says, no quiero que ustedes reciban hate. Aw, I know, Robert, but that's the thing. When you're fly, when you're doing things right, <laughs> everybody wants to hate on you. It's unfortunate that it seems to be men um, consistently. It's always men. I just, to it's me, always men. It just, <laughs> this goes back to the parts that are contradictory for me, right? Because this is a movement that's consistently dragging the left for not respecting um, traditional gender roles, right? For trying to mute the waters there. But at the same time, I can tell you that I've always experienced the most vile hate from men within our movement, within this red pill, trufer, wake up movement is where I've seen the most hate come from men on the internet. This is by no means a definition of all men. Mm -hmm. These are the people that uh, play, I I'm not going to say internet warriors because they're attacking women at the end based off their, their looks. Um, you know, it's automatically, if you're a semi a, a semi above average looking girl then you're automatically a whore a honey pot uh an only fans a prostitute and it doesn't make a lot of sense because once again it's contradictory to a movement that's supposed to embrace traditional gender roles where men are supposed to take care of women men are supposed to protect women i remember back in 2020 the manosphere hadn't taken off as it is right now um there was always viral memes that went around of people saying maga women are the most beautiful women maga women are, oh, yeah. are so much more beautiful than the left and there's always like a sense of pride of that right because it felt like the men in our movement were into some degree praising us taking care of us protecting us from the left but that's not the case right now mm -mm. it's like a a constant attack and then the, the worst part is when it comes in tweets like this next tweet you already saw the elijah schaefer one condemning women for wearing leggings being comfortable um then we but have can i say something really quick yes please i feel like people like elijah schaefer marry very basic women she their, his wife is very basic um and they marry they marry these basic women and they cheat on their wives with the non-basic women and the reason why they marry the, the non-basic, the basic women is because they're, it's comfortable. They, they probably are feminine. They're modest, whatever it may be. They see, they, they can have a family with this girl, but they're lusting over something that they don't have at home. I'm not going to talk about the relationship. I'm not saying that's the case for him. I just, I've seen a lot of examples of that. We see that here. We know a few politicians who are, um, very, very dirty and they cheat on their wives and the wife is very basic and they cheat on the wives with the girl that's they not claim is uh, the girl with the fake lashes the girl, the girl with, with the, the fake, fake lashes, lashes the girl right. with the tight dresses the girl with the heels and the on the hair extensions exactly exactly um you know this tweet right here the, the, this, this one really this one really took me over the edge if your woman uses any app to track her periods just know another man is screwing her raw. Okay, sir. Let me go back to the beginning of times. Before technology, before any app existed, before the iPhone, before anything at all, the internet, um, way back in the day, women used to track their periods through the moon because the women's period, which is 28 days, our cycle is actually synced with the moon. As you guys know, the faces of the moon, 28 days. That's the way that we women used to track their period for obviously family planning before any technology, before there was birth control. That was traditional uh, with, we want to call the Mayans, the Aztecs, whatever, 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 uh, what is that called? Pre, uh, whatever civilization. So nowadays, we have period tracking apps. A lot of times, married women, women who are planning their families who are not on birth control Correct. because they want to avoid the birth control and the dangers and the, and the side effects that birth controls have on women, as you guys know, 
Uh, we can we can talk about that for a whole episode, but we're not going to do it right now. There is a lot of terrible side effects to women's birth control, including infertility. And so because of that, women choose to get these periods. I actually had a partnership with an app called 28. I don't have it anymore. So this is not an ad. This is not to give them cloud. Um, but I do have the app and I use it for myself. And what I found interesting with um, the 28 app or the partnership with, with, with this particular company is that they taught me that a woman is going through the cycle the entire 28 days. It's not just those three, five, or seven days that you have your period. The entire month, your hormones are either are changing, your mood is changing. So you are not, for example, like when you have your period, because you, your body is going through so much, you're not supposed to be doing like a lot of physical strength. You can go for a walk, you can do Pilates, maybe you can do yoga. You have to do very light things. Um, once you go through that and you regain back your energy, then you can get back into running, jogging, perhaps doing some kickboxing. Um, so your mood and your hormones are changing throughout those 28 days and actually 28, that's why it's called 28 because you track that and the app is telling you like, Hey, you are actually in your luteal phase. And during this phase, this is how you're going to feel. And you should actually eat this and you should actually do that. But this is a very insecure man. This is obviously a man that probably got cheated on, <laughs> if I may say, uh, because he dated a, a promiscuous woman or somebody that, you know, just was not a good person and cheated on him. And as a result, he goes on the internet to say this. Um, I think that man is fierce turning gay. I think that a lot of them are actually secret homos. Um, I think that a lot of them are preaching that we are the real conservatives. We've heard that from, from a few of our friends. Yeah. We're actually the true conservatives. We're actually the true traditional men because we want to procreate with as many women as we can. It is our role. It is our duty to spread our seed, to have multiple girlfriends, to have multiple wives. Many of them do not want to get married. They don't want that commitment. They want to have a spiritual um, kind of like what Kanye West is doing with this girl. Kanye West is actually not married to Bianca. Kanye West has a spiritual agreement with her. There's no paperwork. There's nothing. Uh, <laughs> that's really what it is. And so now you don't want to share your assets with this person. You don't want to have a commitment with this woman. Life. You don't, you don't want to build a life, but you want to fuck as many women as possible. You want to spread your seed and allegedly have 10, 12, 20, 30 children or whatever it is that they want to have. From as many um, different women I know that I know that Andrew Tate has three baby mamas. He actually made a tweet about that today. Obviously, Andrew Tate is in another tax bracket. He has a Bugatti. He's rich, the whole thing. But it also takes a particular woman to be able to want to hang out, bang, date an Andrew Tate. Everybody I doesn't want that lifestyle. I, I, and exactly. I, think that like, I personally would not want that lifestyle. He's not somebody that I would want to procreate but with that's part of the problem that they 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 make it seem that guys like tate are like the ultimate uh high value men that women should attain to want to get and it's like a lot of people don't want that lifestyle yeah. like i would much rather prefer being in a healthy equal relationship where i have a man that wants to take care of me not in the not 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 in the financial sense necessarily but in the protection like in that innate protection and part of that innate protection is you don't want the person that you're with to be hurt so you're not gonna stray and 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 have multiple women because you want to protect the woman that you're with so again it feels it, it's it's an um an environment that hypes up these men as the ultimate goal for all women. And, mm. and that's not realistic. On the same thing, it holds all women to the same standard as if uh, there's a bell curve. And then let's say that you've got the Andrew Tates and the billionaires of the world on one end. And then the people that, you know, are completely dead broke and don't want to do anything. And, you know, the, the soy boys that spend all day playing video games and um, uh, and so on and so forth. You've got these these two extremes which make up a minority. The majority of people fall into an average category. You cannot tell me that if, you know, the, a lot of the statistics that these guys on Fresh and Fit uh, go through they consistently talk about how only 40% of men are actually procreating. 60% of men do not procreate because it is not easy for them to find women. The problem is that this 60% are the people that are on the internet in taking this content. 
So then they, it's it's creating a delusion that these 60% average people that really don't have access to a lot of women can treat the women that they do have access to um, as ben beneath them as people like Myron do when he has these um, OnlyFans girls on Fresh and Fit. Yeah, but a, a lot of them, like the Myrons, the, the fresh and fits of the world and the whatever's of the world, they just, they're looking for clips or looking for sound bites so they can go viral and get more views and just shit on women. That's why the last episode of the whatever podcast was so good. A girl that I personally probably, our ideologies do not align, but when it comes to this specific topic and when it comes to shitting on these men, I love to see how she just, sh I mean, this guy was perplexed. It was the first time because, you know, he, he always like makes these he's girls go control, viral. Like he's right. in control. Like he's always in control. Well, you know, uh, and she, I mean, like the guy was like, uh, he looked like a deer, you know, what is it? Like a, like a, like a, a like a, stuck like, deer stuck in, like he was like, and it, and, 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 and it only took that girl you know, a feminist, right? She, people are making fun of, not making fun of her, but saying, well, um, she, she looks like Che Guevara because she was wearing like a li the little hat and like yeah. this like leather jacket. And it took a girl like that for him to be like a feminist, a hardcore a feminist, feminist, a hardcore feminist. That was uh, not a screaming feminist, not somebody that looks ugly, no, not somebody with body hair, educated. not somebody with blue hair, like just a true feminist to shut him the fuck up and put him in his place. And it was actually very refreshed. It was very, very refreshing to see. I was like rooting for this girl. I'm like, finally, somebody does it. I wanted to do it. Um, the same thing with Fresh and Fit. I was watching Fresh and Fit the other night. Um, they have some good points. I don't deny that these men are like, especially what's his name? Mariam? Mary, Mar Mar whatever his name is. He's an intelligent guy. Um, but as somebody, I, I don't, I don't party anymore. I don't go out. I'm, I'm not in my 20s. And but I was at one point a Miami girl. Right. I used to party. I used to go out. I can't ever say because here's the thing. The perception from these these men are these girls go out. They sleep with everybody. They're whores. Or da, da, da. I can ever remember that when my girls and I had our party stage in Miami because it's normal here. Right. Like nobody looks down on that. It's like you go to college here. Where else do you go? Right. What, what else do you do? If you enroll in college, right, it's the same thing. Maybe you go to a smaller town. If you go to a smaller town, you're going to still party in a house party or you're going to party at a bar. Um, for us, if we were stuck here for college in Miami, you're going to go to the clubs. It's just better. It's easier and it's fun. And I can't ever recall a moment in my life where my girls were prostituting themselves or sleeping with men or myself for drinks or for a bottle or for a cocktail or anything. I remember having being young, younger and having a great time and having men cater to us cater. and say, that's a good word. Cater. It's yeah, cater. cater. It's cater to, to us. And are your say, girls okay? Do you, you need somebody okay? to walk right. into the bathroom? Can I make right. you a drink? Exactly. Exactly. Right. And say, and, and, and have a good time. And here's the thing. I don't think that those men were able to afford that lifestyle when you're 21, when you're 20 years old, when you're when you're uh, uh, 25, whatever it may be. I don't think those men are able to afford a five thousand dollar table at live or whatever it may be, or maybe on a yacht or maybe, hey, you want to go to Formula One? That's how it is in Miami. And you don't have to sleep with these men. That's that's the beauty of being a woman. So many guys can actually give you whether and whether it's material things, whether it's a nice dinner, whether it's a club, and you don't have to spread your legs. This entire uh, mentality of the manosphere that if you engage in any of those things, in fact, Andrew Tate had a, a, another annoying ass fucking tweet saying, avoid girls that go to festivals. You know what? The last time I went to Coachella was actually for my friend Chantel's bachelorette party, and she's now pregnant with her second child. Yeah. And a happy marriage. And that it's also I, normal. I mean, things. again, like, like you're not going to destroy yeah. an entire generation of young girls because they do what people do in their young 20s. And don't get me wrong. I do believe that there's depravity everywhere. Like we as a society, we need to um, increase the awareness to how low the moral standards have become for both men and women. Mm -hmm. But I don't fear. I, I, I fear that the manosphere is not doing that it's it, is it doing more harm than good when it's training men you know what it is i just had it it's 
it's it's it's feminism for men. It is no, but I I tweeted it this week. It's really the manosphere I, is a social justice men. warrior, a, a feminist movement for men. That's what it is. Somebody tweeted it. I retweeted it. I'm like, that's literally, and it's a cope. It's a cope for a lot of men that have trauma, on heal trauma. I think that all women are out to get them, out to get their money, um, and basically, uh, shoe yes, shoe on head tweeted it too. I actually retweeted her as well. She had a really good tweet. Um, it's like, and then there's the, there's the part where like, they want you to be pure, not have a body count, but they want to fuck everything that walks like, oh, I, oh, oh, I'm allowed to fuck everything. I can have a, a, a body count of a thousand so because it doesn't matter. I can have the body count of a thousand. You cannot have that because you are going to compare me, your future husband to the other man that you had and you slept with. Absurd. It's, Absurd. It's what I, the, the point that I made to you earlier today, where it also has a lot to do with lifestyles, right? Like if you're dating, for example, a DJ or a club right. promoter, the girl that has to be at church on Sunday morning, because that's her priority, can't be at the club with you until three or four in the morning. Yeah. So for a man that chooses to have that yeah. kind of lifestyle, he's going to need a woman that can at least match a true partner, a compatible partner is somebody who's a good match. And part of that match is somebody that can understand his lifestyle, not because they tolerate it while hating it quietly, but because they have an appreciation for the life that they build together with this person, meaning that you're going to have a certain kind of woman that's going to be a good woman and that is still going to be okay with going to clubs with you and you can show her off to your friends. She's compatible with you. Uh, there's, there's many, uh, to me, it's just, again, to the, to the counterproductive thing where if I'm this super uber religious woman, um, let's say that, you know, he's in Romania where most women are what Catholics or yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, where most women are Catholics. Uh, number one, you're Muslim. So you're already unequally yoked that, that that's first of all. So you can't claim that you want a Christian woman while declaring that you're a Muslim because the, the, the Bible speaks about that. You're unequally yoked. First of all, second of all, while you claim to be a multifaceted man that's uh, in connection spiritually, you're really not because your lifestyle kind of contradicts that I'm not making a judgment on anybody's personal thing, but the, the, the point of the matter is how can a woman that's truly connected with God, that's reading her Bible every single night, that's um, going to church on Sundays, that's raising her kids to be God fearing children. Why would that woman want to be with a man whose goal is private yet, uh, private jets, yachts, bitches, lots of women? Um, why would that, why would that woman want that? There's no compatibility and they forget that aspect of compatibility when they go on these shows. Um, if you are a, I don't know, a rapper, like say what's a Cardi B's husband, uh, offset. Can one argue that they are probably a good couple because yeah, their, and their even lifestyles he, I mean, he cheated are compatible? On her and what was she going to do? Go for somebody else. They have the same amount of money. They have the same amount of lifestyle. They're in the same business. What was Cardi B supposed to do? Go to another rapper who's probably going to cheat on her too. Well, because and, 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 and that's just the way that it is. Imagine him with a with a Bible girl, like with yeah. a, with a wholesome like young girl that's like a virgin. No, it makes sense because their lifestyles are compatible to one another. Um, we don't have somebody said. Uh, so you want to be catered to with men in a providing a resourceful, rich, dynamic, but you as women want to have like a common party girl no. on our system. We never said that. And here's a problem with a lot of you, and you're probably one of these people who are obsessed with Andrew Tate and the other uh, traumatized guys on the internet. We never said that. I said when we were young and we were partying. Men cater to us at the club. There was never a "you fuck me for this table or drink." Never. Right. I went to Vegas multiple times. I've traveled. I've gone to Ibiza. I've gone to Greece. I've done a lot of things in my life. Never was there any men that were like, "Oh, you're you're welcome to come have my my 1942 tequila," but but at the end of the night, we gotta fuck. That never happened. That never, that never happened. Never happened and never, and that's AJ, never happened. To at clarify, all, at all. the reason why we bring up the club situation is because a lot of the people in this manosphere think that, 
oh, if you're a young girl in your early 20s and you're going to bars and going to clubs that somehow you're going to be washed up, used up goods by the time that you're 30 or 35 and then you're going to hit the wall and nobody's going to love you. And what we're expressing is that that's just not true. No, of course women, not. Women, uh, it, it, we live in Miami. A lot of my girls are- party for a regular, right. men party at a regular. It's just something that people do because it's what you do while you're in Miami. And people have stages in life right. where they'll spend a couple of years partying and then they'll meet somebody and they'll hit it off and they'll get married and they'll start a family. And the fact that they went to clubs for four or five years of their does life not, does not, not mean. does not hinder them from creating these traditional lifestyles later on. Uh, plenty, a majority of women will do that. Uh, Even Democrats, I mean, I, I, I can talk about some of my friends who you guys would think are liberals and Democrats and who 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 are married now or in relationships and they were once party girls. They, and, 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 it, and they weren't sleeping around. They, I cannot say, uh, I've never done uh hardcore drugs or any of that stuff. I've gotten drunk before. Certainly I've tried the devil's lettuce before for sure. Um, but I honestly, and, and I talked about this on the phone with you. I was like, you know what? I was, I was trying to think of my college days cause I was in a sorority. Right. And obviously like when you're sororities, um, you, 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 you party and, but there's also a lot of judgment within sororities. Like if you are a promiscuous woman, your sorority doesn't like that. They're not accepting of that stuff. Um, in fact, they're more of a, we will reject you if you are, um, My devaluing if you same. are if you are a whore and if you're devaluing our name because you represent uh, uh group, in, right. in my case it was five sigma sigma so why would we want to have the sister who's spreading her legs with all this fraternity men right right so and i told her today i was like i was thinking to myself like did my girlfriends and I ever hang around any girls or any any women no. who were whores who were pro who were you know and 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 i do have to say that the one or two girls that were a little bit promiscuous and a little bit too open with men uh we cut off our ties with those girls because we you didn't not want an association anymore. to be made because that you were like that too be exactly because it's like you are who you hang around with so if i'm hanging out with this girl and she was and she's a hoe and she's sleeping with all these guys um, what are people going to think of me? Are they going to think that I'm the same? So just, that's what, that's what we're saying. We're, we're not, we're not saying like, oh, girls, like you should go out and drink and have these expectations. Look, a lot of my girlfriends who are married now today, they met their husbands in college and they were equally starting their lives. Like the guy didn't have, they don't, the, the, their husbands didn't have money at the time. Mm -hmm. They didn't have money at the time. They came from good families, but they both started at the same level. I'll give you an example. One of my good friends, we'll call her Mary because God knows that everybody doxes each other on the internet, but my friend, really good family. My Her husband, also really good family. They got married, I think a year right after college. Now they have two children. And the way that they started was her dad lent them money to be able to afford a property, the down payment for a property. They rented that property for many years. I mean, they got married over 10 years ago. They rented that property many years. They went into a small ass apartment in Coral Gables so they could save money, pay that off. She was working. He was working. They made a life together. Now they're very well off. They're back in their home. They renovated the whole thing. She's a stay at home mother with her two kids and he's working, but they had to go through a few years of sacrificing um, that home, renting it out, sacrificing to be able to, 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 to for her to be a stay at home mom, yeah. for him to be able to be a full-time provider. But we partied. She partied. We went to Coachella together. We went to Ultra together. We went to the clubs together. And that's what I'm trying to say. Like, one thing has nothing to do with another. Well, if that I, makes I sense. do want to say something. One last thing to AJ's comments, which thank you by the comment, AJ. We're not, we're not ripping we're not, your head right. off in any capacity, but you, you bring up questions that normally come up and we want to be able to address how it is that we feel. You're asking, so men have to cater to women while women X. Yes, men, yeah, by, by the very definition yeah. of older this men, movement, older men, by yeah. the very definition of this movement, men are leaders, men are in charge, men are supposed to be the ones that take care, that protect. So yes, 
when you find a woman that you are attracted to and want to pursue, you should want to cater her because your innate feeling as a man should want to be to protect her. The problem is that men are whores. So yeah. when when you find yourself catering to many different women as a resource for getting them into bed, then you're going to find a lot of trash women that are only using you for what you can offer to them. If you were more, if men, not you directly, but if men were more selective with the type of women that they catered to, then they wouldn't be so resentful about the results that they get from catering to women in general. The reason why there's this resent towards women is because they've catered and invested in the wrong kind of woman. Now mm -hmm. let's go back to the full cycle. What makes the wrong kind of woman? A lot of these times, these are girls that have gone through heartbreak, they're hurt, trauma, 3,001 things. People don't just get fucked up from one day to the next. I have Either a they story. had fucked up upbringings mm -hmm. or they got their heart broken or something happened along the lines that made them not care anymore, turns it into a vicious cycle. I go back to this cannot be a movement that says that men are leaders, men are in charge, men are the ones that create society. Society cannot exist without men, which I agree with. I agree that that is the role of a man, while at the very, the very same time looking at women, at today's women, and being like, they're the problem. Are those women really the problem, or is it the men that are mm -hmm. supposed to lead the society where those women exist? Right. Um, I have a story. I, have a, I had a friend. We're not friends anymore because she was a whore. Um, and, and no, seriously, she was a big whore and this woman, um, she would date, she, she wasn't just cheating on her boyfriend for her. It wasn't about cheating. And when she was exposed, when all her men caught her, um, pretty much she confessed to being completely traumatized and having all this trauma and issues because of her, her, she called the daddy issues, right? Because her dad had uh, died when she was really young and she never had that father affection. And as a result, um, the way that she was coping for this lack of absence of a father was by getting multiple men and dating them at the same time. Now, she wasn't just, I have a boyfriend and I sleep around. Not that that's any better. Um, it, that's not what I'm saying. But she would have actual boyfriends, like full on relate. Like it was so fucking twisted. Like this woman would literally have on full relationships with two men. So one guy, let's say, was in New York. And the other guy was in Miami. So because you are in two completely different cities, she was able to juggle these. And they were full, like they both, the, both of these men thought that they were dating this girl exclusively, exclusively. exclusively. And to my shock, when she was exposed and with both men found that she was dating both of them, both of them actually wanted to stay with her. Like both men did not want, at first they were like a few and I'm leaving you and we're not together anymore. But then both of them ended up wanting to get back with her. She is now married. I don't know of her life. I don't know if she teaches on her husband. I don't know how that situation ended. Um, but she is now married, you know. So this entire uh, I guess delusion that these 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 whores, these these internet thoughts, whatever, don't get married, that's simply not true. Of course, I don't encourage women to be that way. I was never that way. Um, maybe if I was that way, I would have been uh, married off to an Arab somewhere or something or traveling in Dubai and would have be, a, wearing, a, be we, wearing a burqa right we, now. We, we maybe I would have uh, maybe I would have an entire closet full of Chanel, but I don't. Uh, but, you know, you make your choices. But that's that for the for the manosphere. Yeah, I would, and, and it goes just past the manosphere. I just think that it's important to realize like to a message to conservative men. <laughs> Yeah. Conservative women are out here fighting the good fight. Like the majority of people who follow us are women. The majority of yeah. people involved in efforts to preserve the Republic, whether it be through nonprofit organizations, showing up at school board meetings, committee meetings, the majority of those people that are fighting that fight are women. And it would be nice if at minimum our men, conservative men, can um, do right on the full role of the gender role, the full role of uh, you know, so many times I hear men trolling me and they'll say something along the lines like, I'm an equal opportunity troller. Okay, that's fine. I accept it. I can troll back. Somebody in the comment just said it that I have a ton of patience. I do. I'll troll with anybody. But it does, as somebody that truly does respect traditional gender roles, it does let me, it's, it's disappointing where it's like, damn, like this same movement that wants to protect traditional values is so quick to come down on women and try to destroy them and be vile and nasty. And it, it just seems very hypocritical, very contradictory. So just a message to men like Elijah Schaefer, who think that women need to be judged because they wear leggings or um, 
to the young man that said that men shouldn't have uh, that, that treat women like they're the absolute cancer and you just got to make sure that whatever you do you don't get one pregnant to those men i ask if you truly care about traditional values if faith is truly important to you then start looking at things from a biblical sense where it's like Women are meant to be protected and you don't have to like them, but at a minimum, be a gentleman. You wouldn't go up to a woman in the middle of the street and punch her because it's wrong for men to hit women. Yet the digital punches come constantly from men to women. Right. So just an observation for uh, conservative men to have a little bit of accountability that part of your role as a leader and as a protector and as a man in this world, whether you like it to or not, the reality is that you are meant to protect and that at this moment, Conservative men are not doing the greatest job at protecting women. They're turning gay. They're turning gay. They own vasectomies and, and probably next they'll start encouraging uh, them to have sex with each other. I mean, I don't know. Uh, you know, moving on, we we got some pretty shocking news today. Two different news today. The first one was that. Let's um, actually let's read the, the last contributions oh, okay. before Sorry. we go in because there was a few of them. Hold on. Oh, where are we? Where are we? Here we go. Okay. So Emery says, love you girls. Get to exposing MTG. We, she unfortunately represents oh. me and I've been trying to warn people here, but many boomers would rather grill me. So the thing with MTG and this is where, we, well, sorry, continue. We're, we're going to, we're going to get yeah. to that now. Um, Robert Lee coming through saying, no creo en estos fulanos en el manosphere. La vida es, se trata de familia. Quiero mm -hmm. mantener a mi mujer, cuidarla, amarla, respetarla. Quiero vice versa. Quiero una familia. So basically, Robert just says that he doesn't believe in these manosphere fools because life is all about family. And he wants to be able to maintain his woman, take care of her, love her, respect her, and wants the same in return. Um, he wants his family. And uh, that's really the greatest thing that a good high value man can yeah. choose to reach to to want a family and want to protect said family. Cause it's not just about creating babies and being a sperm donor. It's about wanting to create a safe place. Imagine, and, and I, 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 we're still on the topic. Imagine for a second, the daughter of one of these guys oh my God. watching their mother be one of seven or one of eight or whatever it is. And, and you're it, not a Muslim. And, and, like you're not, you're right, not part you're of not, that culture. So it's not like it's, so it's, it's not, faith. Right. It, there's a faith explanation behind right. it. And then to watch uh, your, your, your father consistently, you know, degrade women that are maybe in a, in a, in a more, in a sadder position or in a bad position or whatnot. It's got to feel it's, it, I can't imagine being the daughter of one of these guys and feel like I'm truly loved watching how my mother is treated. Like that, that lack of respect. I told you my parents got divorced when I was like about seven years old and uh, I'll be 40 in two years. And I've never once in my entire mm -hmm. life heard my father say anything negative about any woman, much less my mother in my presence. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like as a little girl to have to grow up with the idea already in her head that men are going to cheat on you. You're not worth a loyal man. You're th There is no value in what you do. Um, men, men are never, you just uh, don't sleep around. And if you do, then you lose all your value and don't turn 30 because the minute that you do, you hit kill a yourself, wall. Basically. Kill yourself. <laughs> like how sad for You're the daughter. You're worthless once you turn 30. Yeah, how sad, how, how sad for that. Um, I want to see if there's another contribution here. Bridget says, I'll be making Linda's watermelon jalapeno Yay. margarita recipe tomorrow. Cheers, MPL. Thank you. We got, there was heat for that too. Apparently people were mad that, oh my Lin God, that Linda right. put tequila in her margarita. Oh, yeah, was, how dare she not just have the fruit alone on Cinco de Mayo? The, the, they were like, why Why do they? Why does she have to put liquor? You could just eat the margarita. I'm like, first of all, it's a, it's a, it's a post about my friend's tequila. I want to obviously support them. Um, you may not drink. A lot of people drink. And all conservatives do is obviously talk about a par parallel culture. So why not support my friends who own a tequila brand and their patriots in the pro America? But that was actually a problem. Is there any more contributions? No, that was the last one for right so now. So let's get into... Thank you guys so much for you. that. Like I said, once again, no Illuminati and no lizard people. We strongly depend on you to keep the show going. Yeah. So your contributions to the channel are always appreciated and go a very long way. Right, Angel? <laughs> um let's get into marjorie taylor green so pretty much laura loomer if you guys don't know laura loomer um republican operative you could say she's a trump loyalist one of the most banned women in the world in america yeah. somebody that is actually treated like shit on the internet i've never seen people be more vile than they than are than to laura loomer it's pretty 
disgusting just because she's a Trump loyalist. But anyways, Laura Loomer is has been exposing Marjorie Taylor Greene for some time now. Uh, they've gone at it. In fact, Marjorie Taylor, uh, there was a news that leaked, the New York Times leaked a story saying that Donald Trump was going to hire Marjorie Taylor Greene for his 2024 campaign because he knows she is a loyalist. And once the news leaked, they apparently did that on purpose. Marjorie Taylor Greene called President Trump or tre President Trump's people to tell them, do not allow that. She's crazy. Blah, 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 blah. Now, of course, a lot, a lot of people uh, like Marjorie Taylor Greene. They love her. They think she's great. They think she's an America first patriot. I have met her. I have a picture with her. I took down the picture a few months ago because I just don't have a good vibe about her anymore. So yesterday she was exposed uh, once again by Laura Loomer. Marjorie Taylor Greene apparently is still has uh, Milo, a very controversial figure, somebody that has also been alleged where people say that he has had sexual relationships with minors. We don't know if that's true. It's allegedly. Um, and, you know, he was he was her intern. Uh, Milo was working with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Now, I'm not saying that is the reason for her expose. But what ended up happening was that Laura Loomer found that on November 22nd, 2022, the day that President Trump had dinner with Ye and uh, Nick Fuentes, controversial, very, very controversial figure, allegedly uh, white supremacist, allegedly a Nazi, allegedly. allegedly. Um, on that day, Milo, through Marjorie Taylor Greene's consultant, bought the domain Ye24. Yeah, now, today, with the Green for Congress, you could see it. The receipts are on Laura Loomer's uh, Twitter. It comes straight from um, GoDaddy.com. You cannot deny that. It, it the, the paperwork is filed. You could see it all. You could see all the receipts. Now, why would Marjorie Taylor Green be involved with Milo, um, who also set up President Trump, with uh, Kanye West and with Nick Fuentes. That is what Marjorie Taylor Greene has been, uh, or Laura Loomer has been exposing. Um, she says, and yesterday actually, another video surfaced of Marjorie Taylor Greene. I guess she started a live on Instagram or Twitter or somewhere. And in the background, you could hear Milo's voice. You could hear his British accent. It is undeniable that it was him, meaning that he is still on the payroll and he is still working with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Laura Loomer's uh, conspiracy, or I wouldn't say conspiracy, or what she's trying to say is that Marjorie Taylor Greene and Kevin McCarthy are setting up President Trump and are actually working against President Trump to push the Santa's 2024. Um whether that's true or not, I'm not well, sure. I don't that trust. She's working with McCartney. Um, well, that's what I said. Yeah, that she's working with it. Kevin McCarthy, McCarthy to do it. To to to. Push. I mean, when you look at the selection of the Speaker of the House, uh, it, it's undeniable that to some degree Trump, from Mar-a-Lago not being in office for three years, had enough of an influence over the um the the the, the people that were voting for the for for, for McCarthy in the House seat where they held, but they, I might not be able to control every vote, but they were able to control enough votes where he wasn't going to get his seat unless he gave in to these requests. And I'm sure that there's some level of animosity towards that, where it's like, how can this guy from Mar-a-Lago, not even being president, have this level of influence where I have to cater to what he feels is uh, appropriate right now of my, uh, of what I need to be delivering, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that is the situation with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, now, Milo on his Telegram, because he's not allowed to be on Twitter, he put up some very nasty, uh, I guess, blackmail posts about Laura Loomer claiming that he had proved that Laura Loomer had raped men. Oh, dear God. And then people in the comments are asking, well, how do you rape a man? Right. How do you rape someone? Um, and then people were saying, well, you can actually drug them. And then their private parts still work. So then that's how you rape them. Um, I actually called Laura Loomer yesterday and, you know, she's been very, she's good. She's been going through a very tough time, very mental. It's been mentally challenging. Um, she has put herself in a situation where a lot of people 
want to come after her. A lot of people want to probably see her even dead. I wouldn't doubt that. I hate to say that, but I think that is the reality. And, um, you know, I think that through Milo, Marjorie Taylor Greene may be working to silence Laura Loomer because yeah. she can do it herself. She is a member of, you know, the public. She's a politician. She can do the dirty work. And as a result, she hires somebody like Milo to do it for her. And I don't know where that story is going to go with Milo. We do know that another associate, and I asked Laura about that because Ali Alexander, who was working for the Yay 24 campaign um, straight with Kanye West and with Nick Fuentes, uh, apparently he is in, he was involved in a scandal where he was trying to use his political power and relationships um, to lure in young men. And there was a lot of evidence against Ali Alexander. Apparently the FBI is involved, the police is involved, and he may be charged with something. We don't know what that is. Um, he did apologize on his telegram saying that he had always, you know, struggled with sin and, uh, liking other men, same sex couples or same sex, uh, sex and whatnot. So we'll see where that goes. What we do know is that all these characters have always been very shady, have always found themselves in a lot of controversy, um, especially after stop the steal, so I, I I don't know. I don't know, Bella. I don't know. What do you think? Um, you know, one of the things that's disconcerting about how Laura Loomer is treated by conservative circles is that Laura Loomer is one of the most tr the biggest Trump loyalists out there. Mm -hmm. She's loyal to Donald Trump. And so many times as a party, we've recognized that Trump has been surrounded by snakes and bad mm -hmm. people that haven't had his best interest in mind. And I find that it almost seems coordinated that the people who have his back the most uh, the, the most loyal to Trump, their characters like Roger Stone, Laura Loomer, that these people are marginalized by the very uniparty uh, Republicans, you know, rhinos that want to cause damage to Trump. So it's it's just it's very infuriating. I was so happy to see that. He's retweeting her, so he's yeah. retruthing her on Truth Social. Yeah, he um that he was considering her for the position. I hope that whatever Marjorie Taylor Greene doesn't enable that from still being something that 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 comes true. Because at the end of the day, whether you like her or you don't, because you saw some conspiracy online, Laura Loomer has proved to be very loyal to Donald Trump, and that's exactly the kind of person that he needs around him right now. People mm -hmm. that throughout all of this chaos of the last three years, where things have looked so scary people that continue to support him. Those are the people that he needs on his team. And as a movement, we need to do better. And instead of condemning people because we saw a picture, because we don't like uh, something that they said one time, that we are more uh, open, I guess, to the idea that it, as long as somebody is demonstrating loyalty, they don't have to be perfect human beings. And that that should be enough to get them the recognition and, and hopefully we can have a hundred Laura Loomers close to Donald Trump because I think that it Seriously. would be a better, we'd be better off for it. Absolutely. Um, moving on to our desgraciado of the week. Okay, let's ask the chat. Who Hold is on. our desgraciado? <laughs> Did you play it already? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's ask the chat before we bring it up. Who is our desgraciado of the week? Let us know in the comments. Drop your game. Pasa, el desgraciado. <laughs> Drop, Drop the picture. The comments. Drop the picture. Drop the picture. Drop the picture. Joker Royo. No, no not Joker Royo. Elijah Schaefer. Manosphere Cardildo. Jenna Ellis. Ellis. Jenna fucking Ellis. Little bitch. I've been going at her all day. Jebba, Jebba, Jebba. Jebba Ellis, the worst grifter, thirsty hoe on the internet. Apparently been married three times, couldn't keep her husband. The last husband for married less than a, 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 a year, year, put her entire business on the internet. Uh, talking about her husband was rebellious against the Bible and Christianity and the pastor. And like, who the hell does that on the internet? But it's Jenna Ellis. For those of you who don't know, not know, Jebba the Hut. Jebba the Hut. Jeva Ellis, for those of you who do not know, she's a failed lawyer 
this is this is this is one of the, the you know when people say the Trump made a lot of bad decisions. Oh, Trump made so, a lot of bad decisions uh, in his hiring practices, and he had a lot of bad people around him. I actually agree, and I agree. It's Jenna fucking Ellis, and I always disliked her. I always looked at her, and I was like. Why is President Trump leaving the 2020 presidential election up to Jenna Ellis and Ru Rudy Giuliani? Like maybe Rudy Giuliani, but Rudy Jenna Giuliani Ellis... brought down the mob, bro. Okay, but come on, but, but we not are where Rudy. we are. Not we are where we are, Rudy, man. We, we are where we are Rudy. still. We are where we are, and um, she was definitely the diversity and inclusion hire. And let me just tell you something. Apparently, Jenna Ellis just moved to Miami. Uh, Jenna Ellis has been backstabbing President Trump. She's been trying to to play oh i'm just neutral i like both the gentlemen i like them no 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 you don't no you don't no you don't you were an anti-trumper to begin with let's start with that the first thing is that she was anti-trump from the very beginning the second thing about jenna ellis is that she has been writing the DeSantis's team for a very long time trying to look for that job trying to look for clout and now uh she's gone back and forth with alex bershowicz and all these like a uh, uh, loyalist uh, pro-trump loyalist and as a result she's always crying oh they're so mean to me they're so mean to me they're so vile they're misogynistic they make fun of my looks they make fun of this they make fun of that meanwhile she engages in the same type of behavior in fact i have posted a screenshot of her slut shaming a woman that she does not know a fitness influencer i'm pretty sure this girl's in miami she's hot she's working out of the gym and she's like oh if you dress like a whore it must be because you're a whore well first of all the great has uh, the, the the girl has a great body you don't have a great body so you can't wear that so that's why you're saying that she's a slut and she's a whore uh but today jenna ellis decided to go on her radio show she apparently just moved to miami of course she doesn't fit in here uh, she decided to go on her radio show to say that Miami had turned to red because of DeSantis. And she's praising DeSantis and she's praising this and everything is, is wrong with Trump and Trump this and Trump that. And so, of course, I went on Twitter and I said, first of all, you don't speak for our community. Like, you're not from here. You you're just got here, bro. You just got here. You don't speak for our community. Uh, the majority of the Latinos who supported DeSantis are actually Trump supporters or actually people that voted for Trump or DeSantis because of President Trump. Oh, but why couldn't Trump win 2016? Why couldn't Trump win 2018? Well, uh, you fucking dumbass, because it takes a couple of election cycles to turn a place from blue to purple to then red. It, it, it's, it, I mean, find me the place that went from blue to red in one election cycle. What is that? What, where? Where? Find me the place. Find me no, the place. It doesn't, it exist. doesn't exist. Miami has been trending red since 2016, and it all has to do because of Trump. It all has to do with the 2016 election when he lost against Hillary Clinton 30 points. He still won Florida. And then we go to 2020 where he lost against Biden in Miami Dade by only seven points, but he still won Florida. But according to Jenna and according to everybody else, no, it's not. It's because of DeSantis, blah, 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 blah. Of course, she actually replied back to my tweet saying, oh, then why did Trump lose? Well, because you're you're an idiot. You're not talking about the political trends. You're not talking about it. There are no rallies in Miami for DeSantis. There's no energy for DeSantis in Miami. In fact, in Miami Beach, which is a very blue demographic full of liberals and Democrats, there are Trump 2024 flags right now today in Miami Beach, okay? There are still rallies all over the city. Um, there are still uh, uh, a protest that I have shown online of Trump supporters of the older Cubans protesting the 2020 election. Uh, there is none of that for DeSantis. A lot of people vote for him because they like him. I'm not saying they don't. A lot of people vote for him because he was supposed to be MAGA, because he was supposed to be pro-Trump. Uh, but Jenna Ellis doesn't think that. Jenna Ellis thinks that People only vote, uh, Miami they only win red because of Governor DeSantis. Somebody was arguing with me saying, well, actually, the reason why Latinos voted for DeSantis is because of the mask and because of the vaccines. And I said, no, they didn't because Latinos are hypochondriacs. Latinos were the first ones in line at Tropical Park in Westchester to get their vaccine and to get their boosters. Latinos are still masked where uh, Bella lives, which is Westchester. You can still see them masked up shopping. Okay? At the outdoor, at the the outdoor, outdoor market. market. <laughs> okay? Latinos believe in vaccines. They're hypochondriacs. That's why maybe maybe the millennials, maybe the, the our generation, maybe the younger ones that are online um, 
can tell you that they refused the vaccine or they weren't masking. But let me tell you something. In 2020, I went to the biggest car rally at Tropical Park two days or three or four days before the election. So many people were at that car rally outside, masked up with Trump 2024 mask uh, outside. And that's the reality of the situation. You know, I think that a lot of these people moving here her, Christina Pusha, and everybody else, I think that a lot of them are actually um, trying to grift off our movement. They're trying to silence our voices by saying, no, 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 that's not that's not how it works, you dumb brown Latino immigrant. That's not how it works, you right. fucking brown dumbass. This is how it works, okay? We are in control. Guys, guys, do you guys think that I would ever... Like watching this, watching this disaster of a person. And it's not about her looks. It's that she's a disaster of a person. Her tweets, how much she whines, how annoying she is. Do you think that any of our women would look up this girl and be like, this is why I would vote Republican? Oh, Jenna Ellis is definitely not attracting people to the Republican Bitch. Party. And much less she's Latina turning, women. She's turning people off from the Republican Party. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So... Um, I look forward to running into Jenna Ellis so I can give her a piece of my mind. Um, you know, I think that she is a disaster. I'm sure that once Trump sweeps through the primaries, she's going to be crawling back to Trump and MAGA trying to look for a job because that's what these people do. Um, but I hope President, I mean, President Trump knows who she is now. Well, I mean, I, I guess that by this point, he knows um, who she is. She's definitely showed her true colors. She's just so divisive. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the sad part is that the reason why she's, because before she was still trying to play like this middle ground, that's like, oh, you know, I'm just, I'm not, I'm going to criticize both or whatnot. That's not what's happening right now. She got pissed off when Alex Bershowitz was making memes about her and she put her foot down and said, oh, we're going to cancel Alex. And she thought she was going to be this very forceful, influential person that was going to get Donald Trump to drop Alex Bershowitz. And what did Trump do? He put Alex Bershowitz at a, tr at, at a mic at an event at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, and she became extremely bitter about that because she couldn't control the situation which says how much of a says a lot about what a narcissist she is mm -hmm. where she feels like somebody made a meme a shit tier meme at that it wasn't even really that mean it's it's it just said it was a picture of stormy daniels and it said jebba ellis it's just like the dumbest meme ever and she got so butthurt about this mm -hmm. that she would think that just by tweeting out i hope that ron that, 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 that um that president trump, trump does something Alex about Bershowitz. this fuck you who are you what kind of control do you think that yeah. you have over people yeah, it's 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 uh it's it's ridiculous. Before we go, I just want to give a shout uh, shout out to Melly Torres. She she sent us a super sticker. Thank you so much. Your contributions mean so much to us. And Shuda three hundred five. He says, "Why does Dave Reboy get so offended when you ask him about taking his dog to the gym?" He gets so you guys, mad. oh my god! Next time, oh my god! I wish we would have posted up a picture. Of this. this this guy that got the guy that fat shamey and said that I catfish people on the internet. He's apparently he's here in Miami, and he's like this like four feet tall, angry Reuter who has decided like, look, like. I, I, like if you're short just be short just be like vladimir putin just start a motherfucking war like you don't gotta be like this size like a cloud just walking around to try to prove that you're like oh i'm short but like i'm fucking big I'm so like strong. Bro, guys girls don't like that uh but this he's guy also got, like fat guy syndrome because you can does. tell that like he's been like yeah chubby his whole life so like just now at like this point in his life was when he decided to take control of his health and get in shape, which is great for him. But you can so tell that your entire life you had to deal with being insecure about the way that you felt because that's that's how your attacks come off. Right. Well, anyways, this guy, he tried to um, he tries to he tries to fight his shape. The, the, the point is that he goes to gyms in Miami. He tries to bring his like very small dog. And uh, so when he when he tries to bring his very small dog, obviously gyms are like, no, sir, like you, you we don't allow dogs in the gym. Like you can't bring your emotional support dog to the gym. And this guy just throws a fit like and goes on the Internet and, and starts like trash talking uh, the gyms, whatever gym he goes. So I'm actually going to put an alert to my gym owner friends and, and say, hey, guys, like if this uh, 
angry short Reuter tries to come in with this little dog. His name is Miles. Like you need beware, to stop it, beware, beware, because he is gonna dox you on the internet and then put a one star review because he can't bring his. <laughs> I think he has like a Pomeranian. No, stop it. Yeah, it's like one of those like little, like really, really gay dogs. Um, but they're just the, the Sims are just delusional. Let's go on to our last story of the day, which is the January six defendants. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm dying. I got a piece so long. <laughs> so We're, almost We're almost there. We're almost there. So today, Enrique Dario, Joe Biggs, and who are the ones from the, what's what's the other group, the Fed infested group that, that they found guilty? Um, anyways, they are found guilty today of sedition, and they're probably going to be looking at Here it is. 20 years. Breaking, the jury agrees that the government has proved existence of seditions conspiracy. Proud boy Ethan Norton convicted of seditions conspiracy. Other defendants to follow. Uh, Joe Biggs guilty. Rel guilty. Tario guilty of seditions conspiracy. Um, you know, what, what I think is like pretty concerning about the story is that in the in the in the court papers themselves, the governor, the 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 court acknowledges that there was no plan to storm the Capitol. There was no plan to stop the certification of the 2020 election. One of the defendants was in prison in a different city at the time. I'm guessing that was Tario. 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 Um, and uh, convicted for unspoken conspiracy. So whether people like the Pro Boys or don't like the Pro Boys and, or, or think that they're feds or don't like the feds, it doesn't matter. Um, this is obviously a a very concerning, I would say concerning, it's, exactly it's concerning, concerning. Uh, that a, a court of law, obviously we know in D.C. there's no court of law, it's a banana republic, would actually convict these people of conspiracy and sedition when there is no proof that they were actually trying it. to overturn the 2020 election or, uh, you know, whatever it was, storm the Capitol. There was no plan. It was obviously a riot that got very rowdy um, here in this in this article by I think this is the New York Times. Um, it, they, they had, the New York Times itself, it says, none set forth an explicit plan to storm the Capitol building or to forcibly disrupt the election certification. The rulings also permitted jurors to convict on conspiracy, even if they were found there was no plan to disrupt the certification. Um, there was no explicit orders to attack the Capitol that day. Isn't that what sedition yeah. is all about? Trying to overturn the government, yeah. but they can't it's, prove that. I so it's here's kangaroo court. Here's kangaroo my court. here's here's my problem with the entire thing. Yeah. Um, to the people asking in the chat, wasn't Enrique Tario a Fed? Yes, Enrique Tario is absolutely a Fed. Um, we don't know that he was working with the. We don't know. There's no proof that he was working with the Feds on January 6th. But he does have a very long and extensive history, very extensive history of working with the Federalis. And here's what my fear about what it is that's going on. Um, I've, I've talked several times that to me, I don't feel that there was any insurrection on January 6th because we live in the, one of the most well-armed countries in the entire mm -hmm. world. And if we were going to actually conduct an yeah. insurrection, I highly doubt that it would be done with, uh, flagpoles and selfie sticks through a security guided tour of the, uh, of the Capitol building. Uh, so I don't believe that there was an insurrection. However, I believe that the left, along with our corrupt agencies have worked incredibly hard to create create the optics that there was in fact um a post that uh, a video that i've shared often on my twitter on my telegram account and a question that i've asked often is that a few days prior to january 6 joe biggs and uh some of the other and tario and some of the other leadership within the proud boys made the decision that they will not be wearing colors to January 6th, yeah. um, colors are the the black and yellow Sperry's that the Proud Boys wear, uh, gear, they look very uh, clean cut, uh, uh, just a, almost a uniform of sorts. By taking the Proud Boys out of these colors, they ended up in, uh, in gear in tactical gear mm -hmm. and it is the uh th that tactical gear that is part of what is used to drive this oh well they went over there with the intention of so here's where my concern is i don't feel like anything's gonna happen to enrique I, so. I don't think anything's gonna happen to enrique and the reason why i don't is because i believe that he's just a figure in order to be able to justify going after 
the Proud Boys mm -hmm. in general. The reason why the feds would infiltrate one of theirs into a group like the Proud Boys or the Oath Keepers is in an effort to destroy said group and any efforts that could come with it. The Proud Boys were very involved in local activism, uh, you know, whether it was at working at voting booths, being involved in the school board meeting, uh, being in the REC. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they have been heavily involved in the community all over the country. And of course, you need to disrupt that somehow. So how do you do it? You put in, in Insert chaos agents, um, similar to what we believe Enrique Tario is, in order to create enough division where you'll have people fighting one another. Anyways, point of the matter is, is one day you wake up, you decide it's no longer worth being in the Proud Boys. You split up the group and they're no longer effective. Sadly, um, Enrique Tario posted last night before the verdict this morning. They posted last night, uh, somebody was talking about how he had gone dressed into the courthouse. And he's like, why isn't anybody going to talk about my Tom Ford suit? Like oh I was styling gosh. and profiling at the courthouse. And it's like, really, bro? A Tom Ford suit is easy, five to $7,000. And I'm pretty sure I just saw a GoFundMe page just three weeks ago of you asking for $4,000 for an attorney. So where's the grift? Like what, what, what's actually going on here? Unfortunately, um, because of personal things that we experienced with Enrique Tario, where we always kept them at a distance, but there seemed to be like this pressure from like other operatives right. to, to, to push him into our vicinity. Luckily, we always stayed away from that. Right. Um, no, knowing that th his presence was used to slander and disrupt local right. activist efforts, I clearly see that his presence is used to discredit anybody that's around him. And I right. feel that uh, he wasn't there on January 6th. I feel that that was very much coordinated for you guys that don't know the whole story. Mm -hmm. Enrique Tario pad packed two empty magazine clips in his bag for whatever reason, because he didn't yeah. have a gun. He packed two empty magazine clips. We have on, uh, we've had somebody come forward to explain to us that while he was packing his bag, somebody who was helping him took out the magazine mm -hmm. clips and he put them right back in. When he pulled up to Virginia, because the uh, the magazine clips were against uh, Virginia law, he was arrested for having those clips in his possession, which is what makes him not be in Jan not not be in D.C. on January six. Uh, so again, what I feel is uh, is there could there be some kind of conspiracy within the intelligence agencies and informants where they give these optical charges to the leaders in order to then be able to come after the people below them and be like, see, we told you there was in fact an insurrection. This is how many quote unquote on arrest we've seen in order to be able to have that be something that they can hold over Donald Trump's head coming into the 2024 elections. It's very unfortunate. My prayers and good wishes go out to all of the patriotic, honest men that joined these organizations thinking that they were doing something positive for their country, only to have it infiltrated by corrupt systems within our own country looking to subvert those efforts. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, this concludes our live stream today. I got to pee so bad. I got to pee so bad. I got to run to the really bathroom. Really bad. But thank you so much for all of your contributions. Guys, thanks for your contributions. Please don't forget to check out our sponsor, Century H2O. Not only do they help us keep the lights on, but they're really doing amazing things. Every unit that you buy helps them get closer to this goal, this goal in East Palestine. Um, we are hoping that we're going to have Nelson on the show real soon to talk about the quality of the water here in Florida and in Miami-Dade and how it is that you can protect yourself from it. Um, unfortunately, we don't realize just exactly how vulnerable our water systems are and what that could mean for your health and your well-being. We're going to have two shows next week. Two shows. We have a show on Thursday at our regular time at 9 p.m. And we will have a second show on Tuesday at 9 p.m. where our arch nemesis Thomas Kennedy will be in the studio interviewing with Ooh, mostly peaceful Tuesday, Latinas. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have Thomas Kennedy in. We're going to talk all about his shenanigans. You know what? I saw a video of him in Tallahassee. And as much as I hate his politics, I got to say, it's impressive to see that many people coming together and being out there. So good for him on the activism that he's doing, despite me heavily disagreeing with everything that he believes in politically. Um, but we are going to have him on the show. And we think it'll be an interesting conversation because we agree in absolutely nothing um so maybe uh we, we we can meet some kind of middle ground and just kind of see how far are are we really that far away from one another is there anything that we can come together on so we'll have that on for you guys next week 
Don't forget to check out Century H2O. And thank you guys again for your contributions today and for joining us. Before you leave, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, guys. See you next week.